Okay, so we finished the first tutorial. We've got our guy here who uh, has uh, some physics added to him so he can uh, have gravity and can interact with other objects like this block, for example. And we need to make it so that he can interact with us. We can actually tell him to jump, for example. Um, <clears throat> So we're going to need to start doing some scripting, and in this case, we're going to actually start with uh, some JavaScript. So we're going to act, act, click on our guy here, and we're going to choose over here in the inspector uh, to add a component. Oh, wait, before we do that, we have to create a folder. So down here under Assets, let's create a new folder. Uh, we'll call this Scripts, and we'll click on our guy again. Add component, new script, and I'm going to call this player behavior. And I'm going to choose the language to be JavaScript. There's another uh, tutorial for the same same uh, section two uh, that's done with C sharp. That's that's also available. So we're going to click create and add here. That'll create a new file for us, and we'll move this. Click and drag it over here in Assets to the Scripts folder. Keep everything organized. Go into Scripts. Here's our script. And you can see it's JavaScript. And you can see over here in the inspector, we can actually see the preview of what the code is. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually make our guy uh, respond to pressing the keyboard, um, uh, the spacebar key, actually. And that'll make him jump. And we have to tell him how high to jump and... Uh, We'll, we'll see how that all works. So double click on this and this should open up in Mono Develop. This is the scripting tool that comes with Unity. Here's This is the boilerplate code that you get when you create a new behavior uh, in, in uh, Unity. And the, the function for start is what happens when the object's created and this function for update is what happens when the game updates the frame. So it goes through and it pulls all the objects and tells them to update. So this thing up here says pragma uh, strict. This this says that you can't, this basically tells uh, the compiler to detect when you use variables that are misspelled. So you might have the word height spelled wrong someplace and you wouldn't notice it if you had this turned off. The code would just run and it would just not behave the way you expected. Um, and you might not be able to look at the code and say, oh, height's misspelled that one time. But, but with strict on, you will get a warning um, that you, know, you, you misspelled something. Uh, it's not, not a spelling checker. It's just that it would notice that if you declared a variable called height and later on you spelled it wrong, it would notice that this misspelled one was not already declared and that's that's where your error would come from and say like oh I don't know how to spell height you know with the H and G switched I don't know where that comes from you never declare that variable in any case we won't worry about that but but we'll we'll leave pragma strict on just to kind of help us out so uh, what we do need to do though is uh, every time we update we need to check to see if somebody pressed the spacebar key and if they press the spacebar key uh, we want to make our guy jump up in the air so we'll go into the, in the uh, update function here, and we're going to start with a check. We're going to start checking to see if somebody pressed the spacebar key. So if, uh, and we need to uh, ask the input if the, somebody pressed a key. So get key down. So if the, if the spacebar key is down, we're going to have to pass in key code dot space. And this is actually, uh, this, this is the spacebar itself right here, key code dust space, and then this is asking if there's a key. So if there's key, a key down, if the input has a key down and it's the spacebar, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to want to make our guy jump. So in order to make our guy jump, we have to then get his rigid body and tell it to move. So the physics object on, attached to our character. So get component rigid body 2D. So, whoops, we have to make sure it has the 2D. If it doesn't have the 2D, it's uh, the wrong one because we're, we're making a 2D game. So we're going to get the component for our object that's called Rigid Body 2D, and we're going to change its velocity. So uh, velocity is uh, a change in your um, 
your direction. So, you know, you're at rest, you want to actually add some y velocity to our guy. So we want to go up, so we want to add y. Uh, we don't necessarily want to move it left or right in this case. So we're just going to say, get rigid body 2D, set the velocity equal to a new vector. And a, you, uh, this is a, a two dimension vector. It's going to have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate because we're in 2D. We don't want to change the x-coordinate, so we're just going to say zero. And we want to change our y-coordinate, so we'll set that to say 20, right? So when we press the key, the spacebar key, uh, we're going to tell our guy to move up 20 spaces. Or no, 20, make, give him a 20 point change somehow. Uh, we should be able to test this out. Uh, we'll save this, go back to our character here, and we see that down here in the inspector we've got the script uh, player behavior is being used, right? So let's press play. Whoa! Shot off the screen. That's that's a lot of a lot of <laughs> a lot of uh, Y change. So let's let's change this back to ten. See how this goes. Uh, let's stop this. Start it again. Jump. Okay. So what's going on is that uh, the gravity is not very high. So right here it says gravity scale. So let's stop the play button here. Let's change our gravity scale to five. And you know, you notice how I had to go back to the script and change this to 10. Let's do something here. We're going to create a variable. Uh, we're going to create a variable that we can actually change in the object itself in, in our, play, our player character. So let's create a public var. Var is how you declare variables in JavaScript. And we're going to call this uh, jump height. Right. Uh, actually, let's set it to uh, zero to begin with, and we'll change this to jump height. I'll show you what this does. And you see, it prompted us there for jump height. So let's go ahead and save this. We'll go back here, click on our guy. There we go. So now we have a jump height. And so rather than changing it in the script with that hard number, we'll we'll just put the ten in here for our jump height. And we we should be able to see that work. So if we just press play, his jump height is good. And we've got our gravity set to, I think, 5 now. So his gravity, yeah, his gravity's 5. And when we press, um, go back to the game here. We press jump. Oh, check it out. All right. So this, this, is, this is what's happening. Every time we press the jump, our guy goes up 10 or whatever we set it to. So we, we, we can change this on the fly to 20. Right? We can change it to 5. I'll show you something here. So if we turn this off, actually this goes back to 10, which is what we had when we first started the scene. So the changes you make over here while it's playing don't stick. You can experiment over here, change your gravity and stuff, and then go back to whatever you had. All right, so we're going we're gonna to turn that off. Let's go back to our script. So what's happening is every time we press space, our guy just jumps up in the air. And we don't, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, you know, we, we love double jumping. Jump, double jumping is great, but... Pressing jump, you know, a thousand times and having our guy jump up in the air like he's, you know, a bird in this case uh, doesn't make sense. We we only want him to be able to re-jump once he hits the ground. So we're gonna create a variable. Uh, this one's not gonna be public. This is gonna be private. Variable can jump, and we're gonna set that equal to false. All right. So initially, oh, I'm sorry. Let's set that equal to true. So initially, our guy is gonna get loaded. And he's going to uh, be able to jump because can jump is going to be true. But once we do jump, we're going to turn it to false. And that should disable him from being able to jump again. So if we go down in here and we change change this test to if we get, get the key down for the space bar and this, you do that with the ampersands and uh, can jump, then we want to be able to jump. Right? Well, we need to be able to turn that off. So we'll say can jump equals false. So that'll turn it off. So we'll only be able to jump that one time in this case. Jump, and then we can't jump again. All right. So we can't double jump, can't triple jump, but we also can't ever jump more than once. So what we need to do is we need to know when our K 
character actually bumps into this block right here. When it bumps into the block, we want to reset his ability to jump. All right. So we're going to check for collision with the ground block. And in order to do that, we use a function that's already defined in, uh, in Unity. We're just going to provide the code for it in our, our object. So function on collision enter 2D is the function. And it passes us a collision object that is a collision 2D type. See? Now, this collision object here, which I'm just calling call, um, we're going to check to see if the thing we run into is a ground type. So if it's if it's the ground, like you know, if you run into water or you know a monster or something like that, it'll be just something different. But if the collision object, oops, we don't want collider. We just want this local variable called call. Oh, it's giving us troll. C O L L. Uh, I don't like that finishing for us. But all right, so we're gonna get its game object. And we're going to compare the tag ground. So if if the collision objects tags compare to grounds, which means that the, it, it is a ground tagged object, then we're going to set can jump back to true. Okay. So in order for that to work. We have to go back and change something about this ground block here. So up here in the inspector, you'll see it's untagged. And we can set some of these default tags, but we don't want those right now. But we'll add a tag under here. We'll create one called ground. All right. And go back here, and then we'll change that tag for the ground up this ground block to be tagged ground right there. So when this guy hits this thing, he'll check to see if this block is actually a ground type. And if it is, he'll the script we wrote will set his can jump back to true. So let's just see if that works. Boom. Boom. All right, so we can jump every time we hit this block, but if we hit it multiple times, we can't jump, which is cool. All right, so that worked, but you can't have a platform here without double jumps, right? You gotta have double jumps. So we're gonna make this a little more complicated. So, <clears throat> so if we can jump, we're gonna try to keep track of how many times we have pressed jump. And then we'll use that to determine whether we can jump or not, right? So first of all, I'm going to create a public variable that's just for us. This is uh, the maximum number of times you can jump, right? And <clears throat> I'll set that to zero for now. But max jumps is going to be available to us now in this here, right there. So let's set this to two. So we want to be able to do double jumps. And let's go back to here. So even though this this code here says zero, uh, out here in our object, it's setting it to two at runtime. So we'll say here, it, instead of can jump, uh, oh, we also have to keep track of how many times we have jumped. So we now know how the most number of jumps we can have but we need to also know how many times we have jumped actually. So we're going to create a variable here called number of jumps. And it's going to be number of current jumps. And then this is going to be, I'm just going to put a little note here that says that this is maximum number of jumps. Okay. So the max jumps is available in the, in the object. It tells us, you know, how many times we can jump in a row. This num jumps object is going to be, or num jumps, num jumps uh, number is going to hold how many times we have responded to the spacebar. And um, we'll reset the number of jumps every time we come back to Earth or we hit an object. 
uh, so I'll show you here. So the way, that, the way this logic could work now, we're going to create these parentheses. And we're going to say if the number of jumps is less than max jumps, then we can still jump. So if we haven't jumped at all, this is 2. So 0 is less than 2, we'll be able to jump. If we jump once, 1 is still less than 2, we'll still be able to jump. If we jump two times, two is not less than two, it's actually equal. So then we will not be able to jump, right? So instead of changing the variable can jump, what we'll do is we'll increase the number of jumps, right? So the way to say that is plus plus. So add one to dump jumps. And I just happen to like typing plus plus dump jumps before. So I like to do it that way, so you can actually see that we're increasing the number of jumps in that one call right there. So every time we jump, increase the number of jumps that we've, we're counting. And when we collide with the ground block, instead of saying can jump equals true, we'll say num jumps equals zero. So we'll set it back to zero. So we'll jump in the air, every time we jump in the air, we'll count one more for num jumps. We'll be able to compare it to max jumps. And then we come back down to the block. We'll set num jumps equal to zero. So let's just see if this works. Let's go back here to the code or to the Unity. Press play. Jump, jump, jump. Hey, there's two jumps. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. Oh, see, we can only jump twice. And every time we hit the ground, we can jump again. So that's great. Let's make him jump a little higher here. Let's kind of set the gravity equal to 10, and let's make him jump 20. Let's just see how this looks. Jump, 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 jump. All right, we'll have to play with that. I'm not sure what a good number is going to be as we go along, but I'll put this back. Actually, if I just uncheck this, it'll go back. Okay, so, so that's pretty cool. So we got our guy able to jump and he's able to double jump uh, but the code's a little funky here you know, we get this little calculation here with our check and then we set this down here so what we're going to do is we're actually we're going to create a little function this is not a function that's in the behaviors this is just a little function we're creating so function uh, I'm going to call this can jump right. and I'm going to get rid of this can jump variable we're not using this anymore and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this code right here, num jumps, and I'm going to put this here, can jump. So this is a this is the function called a can jump. And inside can jump, I'm going to say return dumb jumps is less than max jumps. So this is a little cleaner. We have a little function here called can jump. So if we're pressing the space bar and we can jump, then we do the stuff we normally do. And the way we check to see if we can jump is we say, you know, check this number of jumps is less than maximum jumps. And if this is true, we return true. If it's false, we return false. And so now the code's a little cleaner. Uh, we just uh, just move that code out of there, put it in a little function, and maybe we can check this function later in some other way. Um, so we got three variables, one private, two public. Let's test it out. We don't want anything broken. Boom, 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 one, two, one, two, there we go, one, two, three, one, two, just goes twice. Okay, great. So now we got our little guy jumping. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to get him moving left and right. Uh, so we'll do that in the next step, in step three. And if this is helping you, uh, give a like, give a subscribe, uh, follow along with the tutorials on my blog uh, on gosub.com. All right, see you next time.